is chronic fatigue syndrome. I want to talk to you about ME. And this is because uh, today a coroner is going to call, is, has called for the, a specialist ME services after this young woman, Maeve Boothby O'Neill, died basically of malnutrition because she was so exhausted. It's not tiredness. It's not just tiredness. It is utter and total exhaustion. And I thought a long time about this. I really did before I was prepared to say what I'm going to say because I haven't really gone public on it. But the reason I know about chronic fatigue and the effect that it can have on your life. You've often heard me mention about my health, that I have uh, autoimmune issues. The truth is that I have multiple sclerosis and I'm very private about it. I've never talked about it. Um, so I have MS and part of that is fundamentally this chronic fatigue. This, this, and people used to say to me, oh, you're just a bit tired. Oh, just, oh, she just, you know, she uses her MS as an excuse. You know, it's tiredness. Oh, she's just a bit tired. They've got absolutely no idea. And it can hit me at any point. And when it does, I literally cannot move. I understand chronic fatigue more than I would like to, right? And I just thought about it and I thought, I can't ask you to call me and tell me. I can't say that I know about this without telling you why I know about this. So I do, trust me. Um, I understand completely what it's like. And I also understand that people don't take it seriously. I mean, if, I, if I'm uh, having a relapse or I'm, I'm in one of these processes and uh, I'm supposed to be at a party or I'm supposed to be somewhere and I call it off because I'm tired, people just think I'm being lazy or can't be bothered to turn up. And it can really, really separate your friends from those who really understand what it is to go through chronic fatigue. So I'm being honest with you about it. And it's the first time I've told you. Because I can't have a conversation <laughs> with you about this without being honest. So that's what I want to talk about, is what it's like to live with this chronic fatigue, whether it be ME, MS, uh, 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 lymphoma, all of these things that create this exhaustion that you have to live with. And I'd like to hear your stories. And also, if it's taken seriously, if you have lost friends over it, if you have lost a relationship over it, because people do not understand. And, and I'm not saying this because I want any special attention or anything. I promise you, I merely decided to, to come out and, and tell the truth to you because I wanted you to know that I understand, that I understand chronic fatigue better than you think. And that is because I have MS, I have multiple sclerosis. And part of that is the chronic fatigue that, I mean, I remember when I was, before I was first diagnosed, I would get up in the morning, um, get my kid off to school, and then lie on the sofa and sleep all day. And then pick him up from school, and then, when he was very, you know, and then get, you know, and then go to bed. I mean, that was my life. That was my life. Um, and that with other symptoms that I went to the GP with. Uh, finally, he sent me to uh, a, a brilliant neurologist um, who actually high-fived me when he told me I had multiple sclerosis. <laughs> Genuinely, he did. Uh, he high-fived me because uh, he said, I told you I was right, and, uh, and high-fived me. And I, of course, burst into tears. But I didn't really know much about it. And um, all, all I was glad of, I can promise you this, is that I had a diagnosis that I knew what was wrong with me. Because being that tired all the time, and, and I mean, not just tired, that, that, that belittles it. It's not tired. And when you say uh, fatigue, people go, oh yeah, I've been tired. It's not, it's not like tiredness you've ever felt before, I promise you. 
it, your arms feel like lead. You, you can't lift your head off the pillow. It is, it's horrible. It's him. Also, I found it embarrassing. I found it, I, I, you know, I was letting my friends down permanently because I didn't know what was wrong and I was sleeping all the time. And actually, a very good friend of mine said, I'm so glad you got that diagnosis because I was thinking that you were just being lazy or dodging going out or didn't want to do things. And I, I get that. And that I did lose friends along the way because people don't understand it. I mean, it, my, best, my best friend now will tease me and say, oh, you're just being lazy, lazy-itis, um, which I just about take from him. But it's difficult to take because it's hard and people don't get it. They think you're just being lazy. That's all I can say. And, and you say, oh, yeah, well, I get tired. Oh, I get tired as well. Oh, you say you're tired. Well, I'm tired. You go, that's not the same. It's not the same. But I don't know how, and that's why I've told you this tonight, because I, this morning, because I want you to know that I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask you about chronic fatigue. I couldn't ask you to share your story with me and say, yeah, I totally understand it. Because I know you'd know that I didn't unless I'd been through it. And I never want to lie to you, and I never wanted to be fake with you. Um, and I haven't spoken about it publicly because I didn't want to be treated differently or I didn't want to be the story or I, didn't, I, don't, I don't want any of that. But I, th I felt it was important to let you know that I get it 100%. And that's why we're doing this story today because it's a big story and it has bothered me for a long time that chronic fatigue is, I mean, even the, even the term chronic fatigue makes you sound a little, like a little bit, oh, I've got to sit down. It's not that. It really isn't. So I want people to learn. I want people to understand what it's like for the, for the 1.3 million. And that is, a, that is nowhere near the true number of people who live with chronic fatigue or people who live with people with chronic fatigue.